Hey there, and welcome to my studio. My name is Noelle, and today I thought I would do a little vlog of just some of the studio work I do. Um, I'm gonna first clean up my art room. I'll do a little time lapse of that, and then I'll fill, fill you in in a couple projects I'm working on um, for customers. And then the biggest thing I was hoping to do is sort out my lighting situation. And so I'll um, show you some vlog clips of the story on Instagram I had that I was sharing, um, trying to solve the problem of lighting when it comes to when it's shining on my paintings. Um, and then, oh, that thing, I might try to re-canvas that. That's not my painting, that is one that I picked up for the stretch of ours, so I was going to take that off and then put new canvas on it. So I thought I would just do kind of a like loose sort of vlog type video. I haven't done this before, so I hope you guys like it. And before I forget, please don't forget to subscribe if you think you may enjoy my content. Um, I wanna create videos like this and then um, time-lapse videos of my paintings and see, yeah, just things like that. So thank you so much for being here. That's, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, so I like to try to get my art studio nice and clean before I start working each day. Um, I just can focus so much better and it tends to get messy within a day because I'm always doing so many different various projects in here. So yeah, it's just like the first thing I like to do. Um, next, I'll show you one of the tasks I'm working on today. Um, this morning I sold a painting, so I'm preparing that for shipment. All right, so this is the painting that sold this morning. It's titled Winter Wish and so far I have varnished it and I touched up the edges. I also added some sparkles because that's a new touch that I've been adding to some of my paintings and let me see if I can get a clip of one. Um, I just thought it would look wonderful on this one so yeah. Uh, what's left is I'm going to be putting it in this frame, um, sealing the back and then putting on the wire and preparing um, I prepared the certificate of ownership and then a few little things um, that I put in the bag with it. Um, what's left is I'm gonna grab one of these boxes. Yeah, this is gonna be a perfect box for that. Oh, let me zoom out here. So it's nice and thick as well because sometimes uh, boxes get crushed in transit. So I like how it's also a top feeder so that it doesn't have as much possibility of collapsing once it's all packaged. It's not ready to be put in the box yet because the edges still need to dry. And I also still need to put it in the frame, get everything all ready. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the lighting situation in my art studio, like I mentioned. So what I have now are I have two of these lights that I regularly use for my paintings when I'm working. I just clip them on to various objects. I have just things that they're clipped onto, but the problem is, is there's so many cords on the ground all the time. What I was wanting to do is I had this idea. Um, I'll go ahead and um, fill you in on my little quest of looking for um, solving this light situation and cord situation. Oh. This is another problem. Miss Eleanor is totally into trying to get these cords. And I obviously really do not like that because it's dangerous and I don't want her to get electrocuted. So that's um, a few of my issues that I need to solve. So the first place I like to go is in the thrift store to just brainstorm and think of ideas of maybe something I can find that that could potentially be used for hanging a light. So, like this super random item, for instance, I have no clue what it is. It's probably something to do with the bathroom, but this guy can probably be hung from the ceiling and the clips can be on it. I don't know, just trying to get creative. So the most obvious section would be looking at the light, um, thrift store lights. Um, and I found this one. So actually, this is considerable. Um, five bucks. The light bulbs are probably 20 each though still. I found something pretty cool here. Um, I'm always looking for paintings that I can source for the stretcher bars. 
and this looks like a pretty decent one so I'm gonna look at how much it is see if it's worth it all right so it's pretty successful I uh, got this stretched canvas and the stretcher bars are in fair condition um, the corners are a bit soft the kind of wood's not ideal but I think you can get some more good use out of it it was just 10 bucks yeah, so pretty excited about that. All right, so I'm in here at Home Depot, just checking to see what they might have. Um, to be honest, I'm not really expecting to find anything today. I'm trying to source one that's like used, um, well not like crazy used, but just, you know, cheaper. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, it's bright. I'm thinking like a garage light something that would be in the ceiling of a garage, kind of like a spotlight. I think that might be really good. Um, I'm not really going for making it look good. I just want it to be functional and so there's some outdoor lights. Let's see what I find. I found these super industrial lights, super bright industrial lights. Um, these ones was the original. Um, I found the right like tiny light, but I couldn't find one that has the right brightness looms. Lumis. This was 300. I was using 1500 before, so that's not going to be bright enough. Okay, I got a little jump of excitement when I found this section. Um, this is the kind of light that I already have. Um, I wish I could figure out a way. Maybe these are higher quality ones that won't break as easily as the ones I got before. And just for the sake of showing you, I also thought about one of these that just hangs down with a super, super bright light and then put in a cute bulb on it. Um, I don't really know if that would really work for what my needs are, but I thought it was cute, so I'd, so I'd show you. Here at Walmart, honestly, Walmart, 12 bucks, what? <laughs> I should have came here first. I mean, these are little outdoor ones, but dude, like, that actually might maybe work, possibly. So with all of my quests for searching for solutions and realizing I didn't feel like spending lots of money on traditional lighting fixtures and bulbs, I have come up with a creative idea that I hope works that I just wanted to show you. The main um, foundation of the idea is this, I think it's six or seven feet, like something like house, it's like plastic and flat on both sides and mostly all white except this little tag right here. And my idea is that it's going to hang up here and be mounted to the walls on both sides and there'd be a spot where I can clip the lights. And then I'm gonna also have reinforcement uh, hooks with chain um, going up to the ceiling so that it can be a little bit more secure. And so that's, and then I also got a second one for the section over here where I work when I'm sitting on the table, that it's gonna be up here. So I can have somewhere to clip. Whoop. <laughs> Let me not hit the camera. Yeah, so it's gonna be somewhere like up here um, that, I can, that I can put lights onto. So along with that, I did get a new one of these. So these guys are 10 bucks. Um, I think they're sold at most regular hardware stores. I just got one for now. And then the light bulb I get is a daylight light bulb that has a hundred and I think 1500 lumens and it is white light so this is the biggest problem that I think um, well one of oh, the cat is playing with my sock kitty, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's one of the main things is like if you're having the wrong lighting when you're working it'll look completely different in regular natural light so the idea is to mimic the natural sunlight as much as best you can so I have found that these ones at Walmart were, I think they're like $18, work um, fabulous. So I had two of them already. I just got one more, because I don't wanna, I really want like four more, but I just got one for starters. And then along with that, um, because I have so many things to plug in, I got two of these. Um, I think these are just like $4 at Walmart. Just extra outlet, and then I got another extension cord that's white, that, um, several, I got two of these that I can use also for maybe being the spot that goes up um, 
to be a little bit more discreet when it's on the wall because I can't really avoid putting the cords on the wall. I know it's not going to look that great, but I feel like it might look a little industrious and kitty, 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 kitty. Now she's, <laughs> she's so fun. She's a kitty. She is playing with the cord that I just put on the camera, so now she's going to inevitably make the filming bumpy, you know. Okay, so then the first thing I'm going to try doing is mounting the bars on the wall. So I think I have like an L hook that I might be able to use for um, screwing them on the wall. Alright, I thought I would just show you, just since this is an inside um, behind the scenes video, um, this is my little tool chest that is normally always a disaster and sometimes things fall out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. So I'm thinking I can probably try mounting the, um, the stick things with, not the stick thing, sorry, I'm not really, it's kind of hard to vlog, I guess, my first vlog. All right, I found all of the hardware that hopefully I'll need. Um, next, I'm going to remove the paintings off the walls and measure the distance of the height of where I'd like this bar to go. Um, I just wanna get the paintings away so that uh, they don't get damaged. And then I'm gonna measure from the, the ground all the way up. Um, I think I want it to be like above these. It's gonna be high, but I have no ideas. I have ideas. Alright, so what I'm going to do is throw this little um, bit thing onto the end of this rod and what I measured is 7 feet from the ground so that it's even. Oh, that went in great. There is like a little hook at the end that I can throw. Let me go ahead and do the other side. Alright, so now I'm going to attempt to put that rod on the wall, and like I said, I measured 7 feet from the ground, and I'm just going to go ahead and try to drill that on. So I'm pretty happy with how that worked. Obviously, I had to grab my husband to secure it, but yeah, I can't touch it, which is good because I don't want it to get in the way of my hitting my head. And then I'm able to put my lights on it. Obviously, this is not secured yet because I still need to. Um, I actually got these little hooks. Like this. I actually got these little hooks, so I'm gonna screw these onto the ceiling, and then I got this wire, so I'm gonna to need to cut the wire to length um, as I go, I believe. Um, and that will be kind of coming down and it will, yeah, reinforce the security of it. And I'm so excited, it's coming along. All right, so now I got a ladder and I'm gonna measure where I want the reinforcement chains to go. I think I wanna do either a foot and a half or two feet, just see what seems right. And then I'm gonna try to screw on these little hooks to the ceiling and do that. Alright, woo, we did it. Um, so I did change the plan, so I uh, didn't cut
cut the wire because I tried cutting it and it was like really tough. So I just thought I would like doing it back and forth and I kind of like the design factor of that rather than just straight up and down and it was easier. So um, well, pretty straightforward. The screws went in very easily on the roof. I'm kind of concerned that maybe it was too easy. Like hopefully they're secure enough. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hang off of it, but I think that it would support the lights. All right, yeah, so um, this is gonna be where the lights are plugged into, and then they'll just be strung up to the wall. It's actually almost straight up above. Um, and then they'll be able to be looped on this little thing and then go along and land wherever they need to be. So I'm pretty excited. So yeah, I got it up. Um, there's only one issue. This other light I have, it like I have the clip for it, but there's like a slow lever that connects to the clip so it can be clipped on. And I lost that part somewhere. I remember seeing it recently and I took it off to see something and it's gone. So it's probably lost somewhere in my mess. And, but I wanna put a third one over there. I'd say aesthetically, I mean, the black wires do look tacky, but I can always paint them white, or I actually bought this, um, it's called replacement lamp cord that I could probably try to do, but I feel like this might be too much trouble um, to try to change out the cords. I think for now, I'm just gonna kind of regroup and try to pick up the room because now I'm getting overwhelmed because it's a disaster. See, I'm telling you, things become a disaster instantly in here. It's, it, I mean, it is a small space. But yeah, other than that, I'm like really excited about this, this whole light situation. Um, yeah, it feels like so studio-like. Sorry, that smoke is falling. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. And um, I'm not an electrician, so if you try this at home, do not blame me if something goes wrong. I mean, there is, potential for if there's any moisture or like, you know, there's a lot of outlet and wires going on, so it could be dangerous, sketchy, I don't know. So just be careful. But um, yeah, I think this will work for my needs and I'll be careful. I'll try not to burn the place down, so yeah. Hey there, so I thought I would insert a little clip here um, of the painting that I had started. Um, it's a couple days in the future and I went ahead today, um, finished getting the painting ready. The edges had taken a bit to dry and so I just packaged up the back and made sure the name and title was on it. Um, sometimes I screw on metal brackets um, to connect the painting to the frame, but this time I just used tape. Um, went ahead and sealed it with the white backing and made it nice with nice quality wire and hooks and just kind of needed to double check about how it hangs on the wall so here I have that I like to put little pads on the bottom of the painting so that it, it lays nicely I have my little boxes with little labels. I want to figure out a better way than just tape about putting on my um, my little logo. Went ahead and packaged all up with the certificate of ownership and um, the care instructions, different various things, little personalized note and uh, yeah, large small bubble wrap and then large bubble wrap and then I have some other foam, um, big uh, uh, what are they called? Little bubble, big bubbles. Got it all ready to go. So yeah. Hey guys, so it's the next day and I just got back from the store. I got something to hide the cords. So um, these are just little cord hiders I got at Home Depot. This was a pack of it, like $12. There's like three of them in it. Um, and this is just a really long one that I'm gonna use for um, above. And then these ones on the sides to hide these cords. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that.
Hey, so I thought this could be a little talking about random stuff part of the vlog. I have Eleanor and my husband interrupting me. And I wanted to share maybe the story of how I got Eleanor, if you guys care. A lot of my art is intertwined with my kitty stuff. Um, yeah, so first off, I am so happy about this light situation. I just want to leave them on. I just feel like it's so dope, it's so professional. And Eleanor wants me to open the door. She wants to be in here when the door's open, but when it's closed, she doesn't like it. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking while I talk, I like to multitask, so I'm gonna try and take off this um, old um, painting and to use the stretcher bars. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. There's like every inch, every inch is one. So, um, I'm trying to angle it so I can see you guys. Um, yeah, so I'm just so happy because about this lighting situation. Um, if you're an artist, you know that lighting is so important. You really want it to be the right angle, the right tone, and um, the angle is so important because it's so frustrating when there's shadows, like your your hand makes like a shadow. So I think that having the light coming from above me is actually going to be a lot better for my painting process and just so much more simple. Um, Eleanor, so my kitty. I don't know, I, I'm sure you guys all remember Monica, if you've followed me for any length of time. I had my kitty Monica since I was eight years old. And she passed away in October, so like about uh, like nine months ago or so. And I was so sad, I had all this love that needed to be given, and I searched and searched for a kitty for a long time, and then I rounded out what I wanted because I actually had a dream that I, in my dream I was looking at this pet store and it had a bunch of exotic cats and animals. And I went through all the different litters of cats and I, I pondered and there was like exotic ones too. And I pondered and pondered and then I got to this little domestic kitty back with kittens. And I actually ended up wanting the mom, like an adult cat that was a calico. And Eleanor is a calico. And I just, when I saw her, I just had this feeling like um, she was just sitting there and she, she, um, she was pretty nervous because there was dogs barking and I just liked her. I had that feeling. So I love like, if you guys ever, I'd love to hear stories of how you guys, um, decided on your pet. There's just like that feeling. It's almost like they choose you. So me trying to find a kitty was, it was kind of, I got kind of hyper focused on it at times. Um, I miss Monica so much, but I also had all this love to give. So yeah, I named Eleanor after my grandma and uh, Ellie for short. And my grandma, I just like when like animals have people names. I think it's kind of cute. So uh, yeah, she's my little sweetheart. And when I first got her, I actually wondered if she was like if it was the right if I made the right decision because I got her and the first thing she did was run under the bed. I know that seems like a typical cat behavior, but our other cat that my husband picked out, she he did not do that. He was confident so quickly and prancing around the house like he owned the place. And Eleanor was like so scared. And I'm not kidding, it lasted for like months. <laughs> like, she was like so nervous for so long and she was hiding all the time. And I really questioned my decision. I liked her, but I didn't even, I couldn't even see her. Like, I was like, the least I want to do is be able to see her. So, uh, but now, it's been three and a half months, and she's warmed up to us, and now she's a little bit like my shadow. And she is super sweet. She kind of reminds me of myself. She doesn't really like to be held or like, well, <laughs> I would be held, but I'm not like a big physical touch person. So I'm just kind of like highly sensitive, and Eleanor reminds me of myself in that way. And uh, she, Ooh, this one's tough. Yeah, so 
She has a very quiet meow, and she's delicate, very much of a girl kitty. And her and our other cat, our other cat's name is Chibi. They get along pretty good, but they do, it's so fun to watch them because they, um, they play wrestle, like they, they exercise each other basically. Oh, I'm getting tired. These are so close together. They're like every inch apart. And yeah, I don't want to talk too much because I know this is getting kind of long, but I just feel like sharing that little story and hopefully I can get this guy down because it's exhausting and I'm tired, but I'm so happy. I'm so happy that the studio is coming together little by little. Happy that, that I got that order this morning. I'm happy that... Hmm just for so many things. Yeah, just thank you so much for joining me. I hope you like this video. Um, in the description, please, um, yeah, comment maybe other videos you'd like to see if, if you enjoyed this or if there's other kinds you enjoy better. Um, I just wanna make this kind of be my raw, like, artist life videos so I can even look back, up, back on them myself. So I thought it would be kind of nice.